Hello, everyone from uh, cold and dreary Fredericksburg, Virginia. Uh, my name is Brian Moon, and we appreciate um, your participation today in this webinar about accelerating workforce training, introducing the CTA in effect challenge. Uh, we're going to be scheduled to go over about an hour. I'm not sure that we'll need all that time, um, but in any event, a couple of housekeeping points up front. We are recording the session today so that others can uh, listen to it later. Uh, we would also appreciate if folks could be muted. Um, I'll, I'll mute you if I see that you're not muted, but please uh, keep yourself muted. We will have an opportunity at the end for questions, and I wanted to make that uh, available to everyone without a whole lot of rigmarole. So this is just being run as a regular Zoom meeting, and uh, the chat is also open. Uh, we're keeping a transcript as well. So there'll be lots of opportunities. If you have folks you want to share this with later, uh, we'll make it available off the NDMA website, which is naturalisticdecisionmaking.org. So with that, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get into the program. We uh, will be going over today, uh, first of all, introduction. So I am the executive director of the Naturalistic Decision Making Association. My name is Brian Moon. I'm also the CTO at Perigee and Technologies and the president of Cerro Learning Assessments. Uh, today, I am wearing my NDMA hat. Uh, so uh, main focus today is on the NDMA. The agenda for today, I wanna to briefly introduce naturalistic decision-making and cognitive task analysis. Um, I suspect that many of you on the uh, webinar today are already familiar with both, uh, but for those who might be new uh, or perhaps for those who are uh, deeply uh, invested in cognitive task analysis, but not quite familiar with what NDM, uh, the connection there, I wanna make that connection for you. I want to walk through some of the challenges around cognitive task analysis and then use those to set up a vision, uh, a broader vision about uh, some really important things that we think can be achieved using cognitive task analysis and really set out uh, a look at cognitive task analysis that's um, really about societal effects. So not just the effects of any particular project, um, but, but the big societal effects we might be able to achieve. Uh, talk a bit about uh, our program, our initiative, CTA in Effect, and uh, introduce you all to the first stage, uh, which is an exciting initiative that I think uh, hopefully you have started to see a picture of uh, in the communications we've been doing so far. And then take any questions or comments that you have about the program. The context for this talk uh, is really important. So um, as I go through this discussion and as you ask questions and as we have an ongoing dialogue, I wanna be sure that everybody appreciates that A, we are trying to paint with a very broad brush here. Uh, cognitive task analysis, as many of you know, means lots of things to lots of people. And we are trying uh, with our communications and with the way that we're thinking about these kinds of programs to paint with a really broad brush. Uh, there's, there's lots of room uh, for all sorts of perspectives on CTA and we hope that you all will help us uh, create those and gather those. Also wanna be uh, clear that we are trying to cast a very broad net here. Uh, again, with, with CTA being uh, around for several decades and with lots of folks doing very interesting work with CTA, we're trying to um, corral all that work. We're trying to cast a broad as net as we can with some caveats uh, that is we, we still want CTA to be CTA, right? And there are some clear um, uh, borders and boundaries about what CTA is and what it isn't. And so insofar as we're trying to paint with a broad brush, cast a wide net, uh, we do want to let others know what exactly CTA is. So quick introductions, what is NDM? Um, we think of in naturalistic decision-making as a framework that people use to study and form and shape how people make decisions in demanding real world situations. Um, that's about as plain a description of NDM as we can provide. Uh, many of you, again, are familiar with the field. Many of you have advanced the field in many ways. Uh, and some of you might be new to NDM as a, as a framework, uh, field of study, uh, the models that we use to describe 
decision making, sense making, problem detection, uncertainty management. Those might be new to you, uh, and we certainly invite those uh, who are not quite familiar with NDM uh, to look into it. Um, our naturalisticdecisionmaking.org site offers a, a, a portal, if you will, to the community, to the to the findings, to the models that we have. And also, uh, as is relevant for today, the tools that we use. Cognitive task analysis is a, a toolkit used by NDM researchers and practitioners to understand proficient performance and how people achieve expertise. That's not to say CTA is only used by NDM researchers and practitioners. Again, casting a broad net, uh, we realize that there are folks who use CTA who might not call themselves NDM researchers. Um, but insofar as your focus is on real world work, and in particular with a uh, focus on proficient performance, we like to think that uh, anyone using CTA is doing work that's relevant to NDM. And so if NDM is a framework, uh, we think of CTA as, as the toolbox uh, that we use to advance that framework. And NDM, we would say, includes CTA as, uh, as its main toolkit. There are lots and lots of resources out there to understand cognitive task analysis, to capture findings that have already captured findings. Uh, there's a number of, uh, of uh, books written with regard to what CTA is and how to do certain types of CTA, what the historic perspective is on CTA, where it came from. Uh, also, a number of resources out there to apply CTA in, uh, in instructional design and in, even in system design and organizational design. We have been, uh, for the past about year and a half, also running uh, Cognitive Task Analysis Institute. That's at cta.institute, for those who might be interested. We've had about 75 people go through the course. It's uh, been virtual so far. We may do some um, on-site type of uh, workshops in the future, but about 75 folks from around the world and lots of different organizations and at different levels of the organization. Uh, to include researchers and folks who are um, already practitioners in a particular domain, being interested in better understanding decision-making and cognition in those domains. So we've had about 75 people come through uh, in a little over a year, which to us is uh, evidence that uh, there's, a, there's a hunger out there, if you will, for, for CTA and, and what it can do for folks. Also, a number of resources um, that our NDM community uh, uh, have collected, collated, gathered uh, in books that talk about not only how to use CTA in terms of capturing those decision-making and sense-making uh, aspects of cognitive performance, but what to do with those, how to bring them into training, how to bring them into system design, uh, and then what are some of the effects that we have seen uh, that come out of those kinds of activities. So CTA itself has been around for a number of decades, uh, and these resources are a great place to start if you're not familiar with them. Um, but also there's uh, a bit of a, a backstory in terms of just looking at all of these different resources. So if, uh, if one were to, to look at the broad range of resources that are available, one might come away with the idea that um, CTA is, uh, is a ubiquitous activity. It's used everywhere all the time in organizations, and we have lots and lots of evidence about uh, its utility, and therefore that's why um, people use it all the time. It's as ubiquitous as Wi-Fi, right? So it's it's out there in communities, in uh, workplaces, in uh, private, public domains, and it is uh, being as, as useful as, as you will, uh, Wi-Fi. Not quite. That's not quite the backstory. Uh, the backstory uh, is actually, I'm going to lay out a bit of a formula here. You can think about uh, the backstory as comprising a couple of elements. I'm going to call these challenges. Uh, so a critical challenge number one is the cost of cognitive task analysis. Cost, of course, in most organizations is measured uh, in part by time and money. And the open secret uh, that most of us who do CTA as a, as a uh, practice know that CTA can be resource intensive. It requires skilled practitioners uh, in order to make the investment of the time and resources worthwhile. 
And so that's kind of an open secret. Um, <laughs> we all know, those who are professional practitioners, that um, it takes lots and lots of effort. Uh, it takes uh, lots and lots of effort to develop skills as well in CTA. And just to get uh, the kinds of insights that could result in, uh, in real uh, effects takes a significant amount of time. We got to talk to a lot of experts. We got to do a lot of data analysis. We've got to transform those analyses and those findings into products that we can then reintroduce back into the organization. So that's critical challenge number one, really the, the cost of doing CTA. If you add that to the next critical challenge around measurement, and to talk about measurement for a moment, um, you know, there's been a number of, of studies, sort of meta-analyses. I, I picked one, um, and the findings I think are pretty clear. So overall, the effect of CTA-based instruction is large. We know that we can have effects. The challenge, though, is that the effect size varies substantially by both the method that was used and also the training context, right? So again, back to this broad brush wide net, lots of people out there doing lots of interesting things with CTA, and yet it's hard uh, to take measurement on just what those effects are. When we have the opportunity to take those effects, we see them and we know that they're large. And so this is um, the evidence base with regard to uh, understanding, measuring, if you will, what are those effects uh, of doing CTA? And so the critical challenge one plus critical challenge two. One more thing to say about the evidence base uh, is not only do the effect size vary, but actually the, the reporting varies quite a bit as well. So a lot of us who do cognitive task analysis as part of our work, um, we don't always have the time and the money to measure the effects of what we've done, of the insights that we've gathered and of the content that we've been able to turn into significant findings. So wide variance in terms of uh, people being able to report what they're doing because they don't have, again, the, the time and money to do it. Our community publishes a lot, and so that's one way the word gets out. But again, that's time and money, and, uh, and we don't always have, for every project, we don't always have that opportunity. Another reason for the reporting variance is a lot of us have customers who are interested in what we're doing and want to get the uh, benefits from it, but they don't necessarily want to tell others about it, right? So these can be proprietary studies we do, or for those who might work in communities where we don't share much of anything, like the intelligence community and some even uh, defense communities, we just are not allowed to talk about it, right? A third reason for the variance then is that a lot of the work that um, is done using CTA isn't necessarily done to uh, create uh, an empirical study, right? So we're providing insights. We are um, giving some color to the performance uh, of experts so that those kinds of insights can be wrapped back into the design of systems, the design of training. And so it's not always the case that we are, um, you know, set up in, in our uh, statements of work, if you will, um, to gather the evidence, right? We, it's just not a part of, of the project. And so insofar as the effects of CTA vary, we can also see a lot of variance in what we know about what happens out there with people who use CTA. So again, critical challenge one, we know that it costs um, time and money to do CTA. Critical challenge two, uh, the measurement of the effects uh, varies widely, uh, and sometimes it's very difficult even to take measurement of the effects. So those two critical challenges then leave us with a third critical challenge. So if you add those together, we have a critical challenge of really understanding what is the return on investment for cognitive task analysis as a technique, as a method, as a part of, of studies and, and projects that we um, are able to support our customers with. Um, the return on investment challenge, uh, it's not just a challenge, of course, for CTA, lots of other practices and methods uh, and even you know, broader schools of thought and framework have a challenge of, of, of demonstrating their return on investment. But for the reasons that I just stated, it's particularly hard in our community to, to show the return on investment for CTA studies. That's not to say we don't 
have evidence. We do have some evidence. Um, just a few samples. These are actually um, pulled from the in, uh, naturalistic decision-making.org website. Uh, but we have seen where we had the opportunity to take the measurements and to do the comparisons in areas like landmine detection. You know, two to four per, uh, two to four times the increase in detection rate when we develop training programs for people using landmine detection equipment. Uh, in healthcare, a 27% increase in accuracy of, of uh, decisions that nurses make. In the petrochemical industry, you know, 30% faster um, in, in decision-making processes when they've been exposed to uh, how experts go about doing it. So we do have evidence. It is published. It's out there. A lot of it is in journals um, that uh, we are all interested in as CTA practitioners and, uh, and uh, NDM framework folks. Um, so we do have uh, some indications of the return on investment of doing CTA. But again, these are kind of few and far between. And again, I've already gone over the reasons why that is, but we don't always have the resources, the time, uh, or even sometimes the interest from our customers in, in showing what that return on investment is. So it's a critical challenge for our community to be able to develop more evidence around the return on investment because where we find ourselves uh, currently is, is, is this kind of situation where there's a major gulf or a gap, if you will, between the nuggets, the gold that we know we can dig out uh, of experts uh, to, to bring that back into designs and training opportunities. We know there's a gold mine in what CTA can uncover. And yet the folks who make decisions at the level where resources are spent don't really know about CTA, don't really know what it can buy them. Uh, and because they're always interested in the return on their investments, uh, are, are going to be looking for those kinds of data, those kinds of stories about where this has been used and how that's relevant to them and how they can go about uh, making use of cognitive task analysis. So we have a bit of a gap here, a gulf, if you will. Um, and so that this, this gap is really the focus of our CTA and in fact um, initiative. Our initiative uh, has grown uh, and is funded by um, Schmidt Futures. So these folks are visionaries. They think very long term, very high level in terms of you know what what can be done to uh, bring people together where they're not typically brought together. Uh, where can we, people who work together achieve more than governments and companies can? Schmidt Futures is the philanthropic initiative of Eric and Wendy Schmidt. And one of the key phrases they use, which I really like a lot, is they bet on the exceptional. Right? They are taking, as a philanthropic activity, they are taking risks on what they see as uh, you know, exceptional opportunities, exceptional people. Uh, and trying to see where they can leverage those bets to create much broader, uh, much broader impacts at a at a societal level. So the folks at Schmidt Futures, um, in particular, want to call out uh, Tom Khalil, who reached out to me back in the spring. Um, had been interested in cognitive task analysis for a while. Uh, Tom's a very interesting person, um, has worked in a number of uh, White House administrations and had seen cognitive task analysis in a couple different places and a couple different projects that he'd been involved in. And uh, his, his comment to me at one point was, why don't more people know about this? Right? Why isn't everyone using cognitive task analysis as they develop training, as they develop you know, human-centered uh, systems? Why isn't cognitive task analysis uh, more broadly known? Why isn't it as ubiquitous uh, as something like Wi-Fi? And I agreed. Uh, I certainly um, uh, echo that sentiment um, and would like to see cognitive task analysis be used in uh, critical places where it can have uh, you know, recognizable evidence-based effects. And so um, Schmidt Futures uh, and I put together um, a program, an initiative, and that has evolved into what I'm about to talk about, which is our CTA in effect challenge. The grand vision here is, I think, 
something that our NDM community um, hopefully will grasp onto. We have seen, I think, as practitioners of CTA, um, that that our findings, our insights um, at a local level in the context of our projects, people get really excited about them. And for good reason, because we know that they can have the kinds of effects I mentioned earlier. But what we're looking to do here is use this um, uh, CTA as a lever for more significant higher level societal effects, right? Which I think is a, is a bigger way of thinking uh, about what's possible with CTA than I think many of us who are practitioners have been thinking, right? We're very focused on our projects. We're very focused on enabling uh, our customers, but folks at Schmidt Futures think at a, a much broader level. And we're hoping that through this program, we can get others thinking this way as well. So here's the plan uh, to, to realize that grand vision. Our goal is to eventually target critical sector level roles where hiring gaps exist. These sector level roles being in particular high demand, high consequence. So we're looking for at a sector level, where can we find uh, these kinds of high demand, high consequence roles that are not being served and are not likely to be served by current hiring practices or even current training practices for that matter. So where at a sector level can we find tasks that people are doing and roles that they're performing where if we're able to apply CTA to unlock the secrets of proficient performers who are doing that kind of work, right, which is the goal of CTA, we can then take those findings and design learning experiences to augment or in some cases, maybe even overcome the traditional pathways uh, that people uh, go through in order to become proficient, right? And so those pathways can take a long time, right? Experience takes a long time. And uh, we also know from our community and all the work we've done that traditional academic programs don't necessarily prepare people for the kinds of roles that we're talking about, high demand, high consequence, right? So where are those roles? Where can we find them that at a sector level, everyone can benefit from? So it's not just one customer, but rather um, because sectors can't find people to fill these roles or do these tasks, having a sector take interest in this sort of thing would benefit the entire sector as opposed to an individual customer. Right. And so what we would see then ideally in this grand vision is overall improvements in a sector and also, and here's another key societal level potential here, increase the earning potential of the folks who are now in those roles and doing those tasks. Right. So we're, we're talking about sort of uh, rising water, raising all boats. Uh, so that's sort of the grand plan here and uh, the grand vision. This is, I think, a bit beyond it is certainly higher than I've ever thought about the potential for CTA to serve, but it's an interesting um, uh, perspective on what is possible if we can, as a community, um, get to this sort of uh, you know sector level, uh, high demand, high consequence. How we can improve those key nodes and pull those levers so that we can see these kind of much larger effects. So that's the plan to, uh, to realize the vision. And this is not something obviously it's gonna play out in six months or a year. Uh, this is a long-term uh, plan. And so to get started uh, down this pathway, Schmidt Futures uh, has uh, gifted the NDM Association to start with what I'm at the moment calling a bit of a pre-plan, right? How do we start to move down this road? Uh, this initiative then uh, being uh, run by the NDMA is what we're calling CTA in effect. Uh, we have two stages to the project with that same goal in mind, those same high level society level uh, kind of effects. So I want to talk uh, for the next uh, few minutes just about our program, what it looks like, how you can get involved, uh, what the different stages are, and hopefully you'll you'll start to see uh, as this program takes shape in your mind how what we're doing this next year can start us down that path uh, uh, toward the grander vision. So our CTA in effect um, has two stages. The first stage is uh, what we're calling uh, CTA in effect with an E, 
right? So um, something being in effect is, is something that's already the case in practice, even if it's not formally acknowledged. And that's kind of how we feel of, about CTA at the moment, right? Again, we know there are effects out there. We're seeing them on a smaller scale. Each of us who have done these kinds of projects see those effects. So we know it's happening, right? But what we want to try to do with this stage one is to bring together, to coalesce, to gather, uh, what is the ROI of doing cognitive task analysis? So the way we're going to go about doing this is actually incentivizing the collection of evidence-based case studies illustrating the value of CTA. That is stage one of our project. That's going to be playing out now through March. And in a moment, I'll walk you through the, the particulars of, of that stage. Stage two then is in effect, what can CTA possibly be uh, put in place to make a difference to? So this is about looking down the road and identifying those high value targets, right? High demand, high consequence roles and tasks. The overarching goal of this stage will be to, at the conclusion of this stage and the reporting that we're gonna do, to launch at least one sectoral workforce development initiative in, in within one year after this program. So what we want to get out of this is we've done the work to examine a number of sectors to find those high demand, high risks that um, folks who are making resource decisions about can help us identify what are the measures we're gonna wanna find as we implement CTA, what are the opportunities to implement cognitive task analysis and then follow on applications like instructional system design? And how can we leverage CTA to really show those much higher level broad uh, effects that, that we all want to see in a given sector? So the goal here is to get a funding source that might be public, that might be private, that might be public-private to invest in this idea of conducting a cognitive task analysis at a sector level so that folks who are within the sector benefit and then the um, folks who can learn from those experts also can benefit by increasing their own skills uh, and employability and earning potential, right? So that's, that's the goal of stage two is to identify the opportunities to go do that sort of thing. The folks at Schmidt Futures um, and others will be helping us to identify the right sectors and the right people in sectors to talk to, and then ideally also helping us to organize this kind of sectoral level workforce development initiative. So with that brief introduction, uh, I want to get to the mechanics, uh, particularly around stage one, to show you how um, this stage is going to play out and invite everyone to participate. I'm now on our Naturalistic Decision-Making Association website. Uh, if you haven't visited, we hope you will. It's at naturalisticdecisionmaking.org. Uh, there's a lot of interesting and, and useful content here, I think, that we're starting to coalesce from the community. Um, I'll leave the exploration to, to you later. Uh, but for now, what we're going to be showing for uh, the next several months is um, the uh, banner here, Accelerating Workforce Training, and you can click on Learn More to dive into the program. So the first page that you're going to come to is going to, again, give the overview of the program. Why are we doing this? Uh, what's the purpose? What are the goals of each of the stages? Also to talk about cognitive task analysis itself and, and what we know it to be and what it is useful for. And then to lay out the two different stages. So our stage one in effect, and then our stage two in effect. There's also a link to the CTA Institute for those who might be interested in, uh, in that particular offering. So I wanna dive into our stage one in effect. Again, this is where we are um, seeking those case studies that have demonstrated significant ROI from the application of CTA and we're looking globally. So we are not just looking in, in the United States. We are interested in uh, participation from folks all over the world. So when you click on learn more about stage one, that will take you to our stage one page. And this is going to be where all the action happens. Okay. 
So our stage one in effect, um, again, lays out the program on the left side. On the right side, you're gonna see submission formatting. And at the bottom, you'll see an exemplar for the kinds of um, uh, case studies and the organization of the case studies that we want to receive. So before we get into those details, let me just walk you through stage one. Um, we're going to be, again, executing stage one from now until um, March, where we will uh, announce winners of our competition. This will be a competition. So we are seeking these case studies that have demonstrated significant ROI. Keep in mind the significant piece there. We are incentivizing this process. So um, as we collect the case studies that you all will be submitting and others will submit, those who are members of the NDMA will vote on the submissions and those judged to be the most compelling success stories will be awarded cash prizes. First place wins $5,000, second place 3,000 and third place 2,000. So these are gonna be cash awards that we're going to give to folks who have submitted those case studies and who have been voted by NDMA members to have the most compelling stories. Hopefully you see the broader picture here, which is that we are coalescing ROI. We are uh, stories and case studies that so we can build this evidence base um, to make it available to those decision makers I talked about earlier. Having it be a competition uh, and, and incentivizing that process uh, is one way to hopefully bring folks forward and to offer those case studies to us. Again, we're seeking submissions from CTA practitioners, uh, folks in academic organizations, and even you know, PhD students from any country. Everybody's welcome to participate. Membership in the NDMA is not required to submit. However, we do, of course, strongly encourage you to join our community and uh, engage with us. Um, only members of the NDMA will be voting. We have currently 230 members, so it will be a, a pretty broad group of folks who are voting uh, on this incentivized stage one competition. Uh, but again, you're not required to join the NDMA to submit. We hope you will, though, because we are also trying to grow uh, this community and, and uh, provide some opportunities for folks who are interested in, in joining us. We will be posting all of the submissions, so that's a key thing to keep in mind. Um, I'll talk a bit about uh, license to do so and copyright and that sort of thing, but if you decide to submit, please know that your submission will be uh, posted for review both to the association membership in order to do the voting. We'll, of course, extract all the identifying information, uh, but we all will also be compiling and sharing um, the, the case studies that we have. So please bear that piece in mind. With regard to the voting, we're going to suggest some criteria for our NDMA members to use as they go through their voting um, to look at things like what was the significance of the problem or challenge that the CTA was targeted on? Uh, what was the demonstration of value to the sponsoring organization? And we're going to encourage a preference for empirically derived evidence of effect. So were measurements taken um, or were observations made that we can say empirically show that this had an effect? We're going to encourage them to uh, look at the actual CTA methods uh, that were used, uh, and in particular interested in integrations with other methods where those were used. And then also overall efficiency, again, back to the cost of doing CTA. If we can show high return on investment and low cost, all the better. We're looking, of course, at the research quality, including you know, what kind of participants were involved, how are the findings represented, uh, and then ideally um, you know, where those findings and implications uh, were included in follow-on design or evaluation efforts. So those are the criteria we're going to uh, encourage our membership to look at as these um, submissions come in. For folks submitting, we have uh, hopefully some not too heavy uh, uh, burden in terms of uh, the formatting piece, um, and we're ideally looking for just a couple of pages um, in, in, in this format. So we want to know who you are, 
if you're submitting uh, a team of folks, that's awesome, but do designate you know, where that award should go. If you are submitting on behalf of a team, then it will be up to you, the submitter, to ensure that if you do win, um, your award gets uh, properly shared with the rest of your team. A key requirement for us is going to be permission from the sponsoring organization to make this submission. Again, I'll go back to what I said earlier about one of the challenges that we face in reporting uh, these kinds of uh, findings. It's often the case that we do proprietary work or we do work in secure uh, environments. And so getting this kind of permission can be very challenging. I realize that I have those kinds of projects in my own uh, experience. But if we can start to bring some of those sponsoring uh, organizations along with us on this journey so that they can um, help others to realize what kind of advantages they've gotten from using CTA, that's going to be a key part of building this return on investment. And um, so that's why we're going to require um, permission from that sponsoring organization to be stated in terms of a point of contact, you know, what's their affiliation, email, telephone. We also appreciate that you may have done projects 10 years ago and those folks are no longer there uh, at the organization. So again, part of the crowdsourcing here is to put some of this data collection back onto the community. So we're gonna require this as part of the submission to use it, but it's gonna be up to the submitters to go get it. We also want to know what domain you know, you're working in, you know, in terms of the job, the role, the task, or the sector that you're working in. Um, a generic description of the sponsoring organization or customer. So again, what sector are they in? What size of the organization? What's their mission? What cognitive task analysis method or methods were used? Um, each case study is going to have to include at least one um, CTA with all the relevant uh, citations. Uh, and or, you know, descriptions of adaptations or integrations with other methods. Again, we're casting a broad net here. Lots of techniques, methods, um, and analyses fall under the cognitive task analysis umbrella. So it's on the submitters to tell us how your study made use of those things. The number of participants. Um, we're looking for at least four participants, at least two of whom should be proficient performers. Uh, and also some description of how you determine that they were proficient performers. These are pretty low numbers, uh, ideally, um, and this is a criterion that will encourage our voters to think about, ideally, we have larger groups than, than four uh, participants, um, but that's what you should think of as, as kind of a bare minimum. Uh, duration, if you can give us some sense of how long it took from the the moment you started doing your CTA to, you know, how long it took to collect every, uh, all your uh, CTA information and data. Um, you could also talk about maybe CTA data collection to the completion of any application you developed. So it took us three months to do the CTA and then two more months to develop um, our, our training program, for instance. So some sense of how long this took. And then what were those applications that were derived from your CTA products, um, including, you know, a description of how you developed them, you know, how, how much effort uh, that took and what kind of methods you used. Did your CTA findings roll into an instructional system design approach, for instance? Um, we're not limiting the applications here. Um, you know, it could be an application is we shared the findings with the customer, right? So we reported them, we gave them a briefing. It could be that we developed an instructional uh, or training experience. It could be that they wrapped into a cognitive system design, including the design of software, hardware, or workplace. It could be an organization that was designed or maybe even a policy uh, implications. So we're not limiting the applications here. Um, obviously, back to that big vision and plan I laid out, the goal there is to accelerate the achievement of expertise. So insofar as your application is um, of your CTA findings is toward those ends, then that's terrific. Finally, the big piece here, can you describe all the evidence uh, of value? And again, we're not limiting here to what we mean by evidence of value, uh, except that it should be empirically derived evidence of effect, either qualitative or quantitative. Um, we 
we'll certainly accept a customer provided perspective. Uh, and again, that's what a lot of us go on uh, in terms of the value that we're providing as our customers say this is a valuable experience. So we don't want to discourage people from getting their customer's perspective. In fact, we'd encourage that. But our hope is that we will get more than just our customer liked what we provided or got value from it. What are the evidence uh, evidence bases of, of value that um, you can show from your customers? Um, citations, uh, again, for the CTA methods, or if your work was actually, you're doing a case study and it was actually previously covered by a, in another publication, please let us know that. Um, and the citations don't count toward the uh, two-page word count. We do have an exemplar case study and template in Word format, so you can just download that and fill in these, uh, fill in these requirements. Okay, so again, hopefully not a heavy lift in terms of the actual structuring and content. Um, the heavy lift, from my personal perspective, is going to be finding those sponsors, getting them on board with what you're trying to do here, um, and then finding that evidence. Uh, it may be that the organization has that evidence and you just don't know about it, right? Or it may be that the organization might let you come in and find some of the evidence. Um, again, we crowdsourcing this approach so that you all can do the work. We're incentivizing that so that you hopefully will do the work. We also hope, by the way, that you know this um, contest uh, also encourages people to reconnect with former customers or figure out uh, new opportunities to apply CTA. So I think there's probably some some side benefits of, of going out there and, uh, and trying to gather this kind of information. So um, important date, February 15th. Uh, we are accepting the submissions through February 15th. There's a pretty basic submission form at the bottom. Tell us who you are, give us your email, and then upload that file. Uh, again, the easiest thing to do is just use our exemplar uh, case study uh, and just upload that either as a uh, document or a PDF. We do ask for um, permission to share. And uh, again, with that, and from my perspective, that's been one of the challenges in, in showing the return on investment is just the limitations in sharing uh, this kind of evidence and these kinds of stories. So um, know that if you do submit, even if you do not win, uh, we will be looking to uh, compile and share and make easily digestible uh, the the overview of what these uh, what these uh, particular evidence bases have shown. I am going to move on quickly to talk about uh, our stage two, and then we will open this up uh, for some questions, which hopefully a few have arisen out of the um, description here. So again, our stage two is going to be a a research project really run by the NDMA. Uh, we're going to be looking to connect with uh, folks in sectors. We're going to be looking across a number of sectors. We haven't decided uh, what those sectors should be, uh, but we're also going to be looking to our membership to try to help us identify sectors, leaders in those sectors. So these are folks ideally that are in you know, executive type positions who are trying to understand whether their organizations are per performing effectively and efficiently so that they can give us some sense of where those roles are that they're struggling to fill, where those tasks are that they're seeing lots of errors or, or implications for safety or loss of revenue. They can help us dial in on those uh, on those uh, areas where those targets where CTA might be useful. So this will be a, a research project, uh, again, with the long-term goal of understanding what some of the uh, opportunities are so that we can ideally as a community then go out into a sector and do a cognitive task analysis, create some products, create some experiences from that, and then show and gather the data that shows that what we've done here with cognitive task analysis is having um, a key effect on this particular sector. So right now we have a description uh, of our stage two, and so you're welcome to review that as well. Um, these are some candidate sectors and roles. There's already, of course, been some work done in these areas, but we are going to look to grow this, um, uh, this list of, of potential sectors that we can explore. 
financial sectors, um, network and computer security type sectors, um, commercial product, uh, commercial commercially packaged goods. Um, so all of those are candidates where um, we're going to be looking to find those those potential targets. So that's an overview uh, of our of our initiative. Um, again, keep that date February fifteenth in mind. We are not going to accept any late submissions. Um, we've given two months now for folks to go out and gather those data, and have those conversations, build your story, make your case, right, and ideally. If you want to vote on your own submission, uh, you will also join the NDMA so that you can join us in, in selecting the most important ones. The incentives, uh, again, is, is, a, is a tactic to bring folks forward uh, to get them inspired to, uh, to contribute, but I'm hoping that folks also see the bigger picture here, which is um, insofar as CTA is important to you, it's important to other folks. Uh, who are practitioners who are on this call and who are not on this call um, and hopefully you'll you'll join us in trying to bring CTA uh, into the forefront reach for ubiquity we'd all I think like to see CTA be used more broadly and this uh, initiative is a step toward that I want to pause here and invite folks to ask questions uh, the chat is open if you want to type your questions uh, or if you want to just come on mic uh, we will take your verbal questions as well. Brian, this is Leah. Um, can we submit more than one? Yes, great question. Uh, everyone is able to submit as many as they can come up with. Uh, again, with, with those kind of criteria in mind, it may be a challenge to pull together a bunch, but um, if you're like me and you've done a lot of CTA studies, uh, there's all kinds of opportunity out there. So yes, individuals can submit more than one, and then of course, more than one can come from any organization as well. Thanks. I do have one more question. Okay. Um, one of the cases that I'm thinking of using, the company, uh, we did publish it. It's been published in a peer reviewed journal, mm -hmm. but also the company is gone. They've been sold. They've been acquired by someone else, which was part of the success story actually. So um, there really is no, no way to, to get permission from the company, but we did publish the results and got permission for that. So is, would that do? I, um, sure. Uh, and again, what we're trying to do is compile, allow our NDM membership uh, to do the voting. Um, and so you can submit whatever you want under those guidelines. And if you're um, unavailable, unable to provide certain information, let us know. Right. Okay. So your story would be a uh, especially under the permission to share, um, you know, share that content with us so that we can let the association know that um, this was done. It was previously published there. <laughs> the folks no longer exist in terms of that company. But so tell the story is the bottom line. Tell the story of your study. And uh, and hopefully we can get um, we're expecting to get a variety of these stories. Right. But um, the goal here is to to build out a collective. OK, thanks. Yeah, Sylvia, I, I see your question in the chat. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, and so the question is, you're talking about compiling and sharing the data. Do you plan to publish the data? And if so, in abstract format proceedings, we will be publishing uh, the stories, the case studies. Uh, we are likely to do that as a uh, digital publication on the NDMA website. Um, it will not be a formal publication in terms of a journal or anything like that. Uh, but yes, we will be we will be making uh, the all the case studies publicly available. The reason I'm asking, thank you, uh, Brian. The reason I'm asking is that we have pending publications, and so far in in our field, um, you can submit as many abstracts as you wish. Um, but only once a full publication. So that is why we would like to, to find the best format and we would definitely like to contribute, but I understand that they will be published in this short format and not a full publication. That's... Um... 
my yeah, question. We'll, Thank you. Right. Yeah. So we will um, we will provide a digital publication that will enable people to find these stories uh, that will present them in a way that's compelling uh, and in a way that, again, tells those stories that people have. So what exactly that's going to look like, uh, we, we are working on that uh, at the moment. Uh, but, you know, you can kind of envision mm -hmm. a digital publication that uh, makes all these stories um, easily digestible uh, by the folks who are going to have an interest in them, easily findable, uh, and even going so far as trying to bring mm -hmm. these two people, right? So, so, so we're going to be doing some work to, to ensure that the people in the sectors where these stories are coming out of also have access to them and understand that they're out there. Uh, Doug, uh, you had a question or are you? No, just... I'm sorry. That's okay. my fault. Okay. Um, Emily, did you have a question? Yeah, I am curious about how voting is going to go. Is it the case that one NDMA member will eventually vote for their favorite or is it more of a ranking or do you have any insight about how that might work? Yep, uh, it's gonna be a ranked vote. So essentially we're gonna make um, abstracts, if you will, uh, you know, the key fields, what'd you do, what methods you use, how big was your study, what were the impacts uh, and effects? Um, so we'll make, We'll abstract those from the submissions, uh, not identifying uh, customers or that sort of thing, or obviously the, the CTA practitioners. And then we will present those to the association members uh, to and invite them to vote. And it will be a ranked vote. So basically pick your top three. Awesome, thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom has asked a question as well. Uh, uh, about a possible submission. So a renowned expert who's one of the engineers who founded the internet uh, who's going to pass away in the next few years, sadly, known for their unique expertise. Is CTA appropriate for extracting their expertise? Um, uh, and is that an appropriate effect? Um, I imagine you're looking for business ROI. Um, so Tom, certainly that it would be an awesome target uh, for a cognitive task analysis. Um, the goal of this particular project is to um, find what the ROI is for doing cognitive task analysis. Um, and so, yes, we are looking for, you know, business in the broad sense ROI, but that can mean everything from, you know, uh, improve safety to increase revenue uh, to more efficient operations. All those sorts of things are what we're looking for. Um, so your particular um, uh, case might be uh, appropriate for a cognitive task analysis. Um, I don't know if in if in two months you'd be able to do a CTA and uh, uh, with this person and others and, and develop a project where you could show those effects. But I'm certainly happy uh, and. I'm sure others are uh, as well to talk about that case if um, if that's an opportunity you have. Any other questions or comments? Um, question, can separate file with images include descriptive text or just images uh, uh, keeping all the text to two pages? Um, Images are certainly welcome, um, and bear in mind, we're going to try to turn uh, these Word documents into, uh, into um, internet-friendly digital publication. Uh, so if you have images, great, um, and especially if they are exemplary of your effects. I think uh, seeing some images about the way CTA is actually affecting the world would be very helpful. Um, if you do have those images, um, and you know, again, we're trying to keep this to two pages to, to tell the story as succinctly and concisely as you can. But if you have images, you're welcome to include those. It will be a, a Word document um, that you're editing. So um, you're, you're welcome to include them. Couple more seconds for questions. All right, I think we can go ahead and wrap up then if there are no more questions. Uh, again, February 15th, we will not be accepting any submissions after February 15th. 
everything that I've just gone through and all the other information you need to know is at naturalisticdecisionmaking.org. Again, I want to thank um, our sponsor, Schmidt Futures, and uh, and express my excitement in working with them. They are going to be super helpful when it comes to identifying those kind of sector level um, folks that we need to talk to and uh, and connecting with, with those folks. But that's also what we're going to be looking to our community to help us build is those connections to folks within uh, the various sectors that they work so that we can get this conversation, this exploration going in our stage two. In the meantime, um, you are welcome to submit. Uh, submission is open today uh, and will be open through February 15th. If you do have any questions, please reach out to me, brian at naturalisticdecisionmaking.org, and I'll point you in the right direction. Um, and that can include uh, any uh, questions you have about your individual submission and whether it might be appropriate or, you know, the um, formatting or anything like that. So ask your questions, get those conversations going, go find your customers, go dig up that information. Um, and uh, hopefully we can collectively build out a story about the potential value for CTA to have these much larger effects that I think we all agree would be uh, would be a huge win for cognitive task analysis generally. So uh, I'll go ahead and bring this to a close. Again, good luck on your submissions and send me questions. And I hope uh, you all will join us. Uh, if you're not already an NDM member, you are certainly welcome to join us uh, so that you can participate more broadly in the program. If you're not a member and you have a great story to tell, then please come tell it. Thank you all for your time. Uh, this recording will be available on, on our website shortly. So if you want to point others to it, uh, please do so. Again, thanks for your time. And we look forward to working with you.